spiritual cobwebs in your mindset. Kaliba so kalibro kosuto. They shall be clear now. Every small mind shall become great mind. They believe it so. Say, attempt great things for God and expect great things from Him. Your mind can do better than you are doing. I speak to your mind. Ministers in the house, from today, your mind will see solution. Nothing shall be a problem to you. What was a problem before shall be your solution. Let somebody say, I receive it. Come and shout, I believe it. Take your seat. I'm coming. I'm not even started. Where you are now is the level of your mind capacity. This thing is all encompassing. Is it about vision casting? It's about your mind capacity. Is it leading by vision? It's about your mind capacity. Is it dealing with life issues? It's about mind capacity. Is it overcoming obstacles? It's about mind capacity. Measure it. Is it living a holy life? Is it living a life of righteousness? Is it integrity? Is the issue of the mind? You can see how, how broad it is. I can't even cover it all. You can see that if this is not well addressed, you will be rigmaroling. You will be, you'll be beating the bush. You will be cutting the leaves. And the root is there. And when you cut the leaves, it grows again. You cut it, it grows again. But after today, because you stayed behind, you didn't go home before the end of this conference. My God will begin to blow air into your mind. The air of power. The air of authority. The air of conviction. The air of idea. The air of revelation. I said receive. You know, sit down. The mind power is, as, is so strong that once it is lost, the whole life of the individual is lost. For example, once you lose any battle in your mind, hardly will you win that battle in the physical. Once in your mind you are giving up, it's, it's, it's difficult, if not impossible, to gain it back. But once you have won it in your mind, you say to this obstacle, you dismount it, you will surely move. I will not bow for you, you will bow for me. You have settled that in your mind. My friend, let it be Goliath. It will come down. I say it will come down. It's, it's so important. That's why Paul says, you need to renew your mind. And in other portions of the Bible, it talks about renew your mind as a means of renew your strength. Renew your mind means renew your strength. And it, when it talks about renew your strength, it says you can renew your strength like the ego. It, it is a process. Renewal of the mind is a process. It's an ongoing thing. Like the ego, you surely renew his strength. And I bet you, it's not easy. The process is not for the lazy. The process is not for those who, who have accepted defeat. You have, you have, if you are here today, you have accepted defeat on any issue. I reverse that issue in the name of Jesus Christ. By the authority of this spoken word, you will conquer that issue by the power of God. If you are the one I'm speaking to, let me hear your yes. Don't accept defeat. It, to renew is something that is painful sometimes. It requires sacrifice. Look at the ego, for example. When an ego has grown old, and he wants to renew his strength. Because the last son of an average ego is over 150 years. 
The eagle will climb so high and begin to use his beak to remove his feathers. One by one. Until all the old feathers are gone. And the eagle cannot fly. <laughs> That's a tough period. He will be hungry. It's a time of fasting. He cannot eat because he cannot fly the cash. And when that one has done, the feathers will come back. When it comes back, it's stronger than the one that was removed. The eagle now can fly like anything. And when he wants to renew the beak with which he catches, he will use that beak and hit it on the rock, hit it on the rock, hit it on the rock, hit very well, and be, until everything is removed. Is it easy? Blood will come out. When he wants to remove the claws, he will keep doing like this until all the claws are gone. And he will look like he's powerless. But after some time, when the claws come back, when the pig comes back, when the feathers come back, oh, he will fly again. And even a whole animal like a goat, as small as that bird is, he will come down and get it. And the speed will not be reduced. Because he has been renewed. I speak to somebody here. You are renewed in the name of Jesus. Like the eagle, you are coming back. You are bouncing back. You are taking over. I command your strength to be renewed. Your mind to be renewed. Your life to be renewed. Your memory to be renewed. Your finances to be renewed. Everything about you be renewed. Somebody say, I receive. Take your seat. Take your seat. It is very important. It is growing renewal of mind. That result in transformation is also growing towards Christ likeness. In your thoughts, in your belief, in your action, and the entirety of your life. But I've said it must start on the foundation of regeneration. Because if that is not done, we'll be deceiving ourselves. You, do you all know the pig? Pig, pig. You put a pig, pig. A lady. You put a pig in a glass house. In a white leather seat sofa. And you say, pig, and stay here. This is where you belong. This is your home. I think pig will be there for two days. A few hours. Pig will find itself back to where it belongs. Because the mindset is for the mold. That's it. That's it. You, the, we, we must get it right. So, having laid that foundation, let's talk about the process. The process of our mind being renewed Start with the way we think. It starts with the way we reason. When our thinking faculty is changed, when our mind is changed, our belief will be changed. Level one is change in your mind or thinking will lead to change in belief. Oftentimes, we hammer the belief. We don't talk about the mind. Change in mind, we lead to change in belief. Doctrine, teaching, belief. When that one is changed, then it will lead to a change in action. The, two, the first two levels are not seen. But the third level, which is the action, 
are what is visible, what we can see. And over time, we judge by what we can see. We deal with what we can see as if that is what needs to change. Transformation begins with the mind. It leads to belief. Then to action. And then lastly, the entire life is changed. When you break any of these chains, you will not see the result you want to see. I repeat, the mind, then belief, then action, then the entire life. And so when you look at the end result, you are dealing with the life of the person without talking about the, the mind. You won't get the result you want to see. Most of the time we focus on change of attitude. Sometimes we focus on change of belief system. We don't deal with the mind first. Your mind is the key. Let me give you quickly. My time is almost gone. Let me give you quickly the story of two women. Listen to this story. Two women and you can judge the power of the mind. In the 70s, a woman named Loza Schultz, who was 63 at that time, lifted the back end of a Buick car off her grandson's arm. If you know, those of you who live in America, you know Buick car. He lifted out the back, the end back of the car, hold the shoulder, son arm. Peak performance author, Dr. Charles Garfield, tried to get an interview with her, but she refused. Unwilling to talk about the event. After much convincing, she finally told him that she didn't like to think about what happened. She said, if I was able to do this when I didn't think I could, what does that say about the rest of my life? Have I wasted it? She asked. Charlie was able to coach this woman into pursuing her dreams. And at 63, she went back to school. She got a degree in geology and later became a professor at a local university at the age of 63. I don't know if you understand that, that illustration. What she thought she could not do, she did it. And she said, so this is my life. That means I, I could have done more than this. But my mind, I, I didn't develop my mind to that capacity. Now she was encouraged. And after, after the age of 60 days, she went to back to school. And she became a professor. Many of you have written yourself up. You think you are too old to achieve great things. You think you are too old to go back to school. Your mind is telling you you, you are okay. You, you are, it's too late for you. It's not too late for you. Listen to another story. In 1952, Florence Shadwick wanted to swim California's shoreline. She had already been the first woman to swim the English Channel. Once she began her journey across the ocean water, her fear got the best of her. Scared of sharks, fighting the fog, and the chilly water, she towed the boat beside her. She wanted to quit. She had already been swimming for 15 hours. And now she says she wants to quit. She was exhausted and ready to throw in the towel. Her mother tried to encourage her, telling her that she can do it. She was close to the end. But panicked, Shadwick gave up. And she didn't get the award. Two stories. Somebody who didn't know what he could do, but launched out by developing her mind and achieved it in the other one who could have done it, who could have done something like that, but allowed fear. And she 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 failed to get to the highest level. Whatever is blocking your mindset, making you to remain where you are now. May God's power break through the night in the name of Jesus. After this conference, you will achieve great things for God. You will go to the level you have never gone to. Because of the transformed mind. We are not talking of just the spiritual aspect. 
We are talking of what the transformation in your mindset can do, even in your physical life. The Bible says, as a man think, as a man think, so is. As you think, so you are. As you think, so you act. As you think, so you believe. As you think, so it happens to you. What you fear becomes your fear. What you conquer, you conquer. What you are afraid of becomes your master. You need to change your mindset. Today, there will be an exchange between you and the thing that made you to be afraid. You become a terror to your terrorists. Let somebody say amen to that. What you think is who you are and is what you are. What you think is what forms your belief. Your belief determines your action. And your action is your lifestyle. So, what is in your mind? What is the state of your mind? Are you still thinking the way you used to think before you were converted? Those things that you used to be afraid of when you are not believer, why are you still afraid of them? Many of us are living under fear. You are still afraid of the shrine. You are still afraid of the idols. Some of you believe charms more than prayer. Some of you fear wishes more than you fear God. Your mind is so little to comprehend the ability of God to save you from wishes. Your mind is so small that you put God in a box. You see God the way you see your weak earthly father. You are so limited in your comprehension of the power, the authority of the supreme God, the essence of this, the I am that I am. The God who sits in heaven, who makes his head his full soul. You see him the way you see your local chief or the king in your village. You don't know the God you serve. And you are daily, you are daily between God and Satan. You are comparing it to God to Satan as if they are two, two, two superpowers. No! One is the supreme God. The other is the rebellious devil. My God and my Father. Everybody here whose life is under fear and speak with the authority of God. Whatever makes you to live in fear, today I cancel them. Receive power of the mind to conquer in the spirit realm. Receive power of the mind to overcome those forces that keep your mind low. Receive power to overcome, to conquer, to triumph. Somebody say, I receive. Take your seat. Take your seat. You see, it's the mind is so. They, you need to have a change of paradigm from your ATR paradigm, ATR mindset, to a biblical Christocentric paradigm. Transformation is not reformation. Transformation is the renewal of your mind. It is empowering your mind, developing your mind. In the direction of growth toward God. You know, I have not mentioned the Greek word used for transformation. It is the Greek word called metamorphoi, which is translated metamorphosis. It is the change and development that takes place in in a in a in a, in a, in a, a, a insect like butterfly. It is a stage that starts from egg to lava, lava to pupa, and pupa to imago. At, the, at that at the time, you too, you are like that. You, there was a time you were like egg, the egg. At the time you were like the, 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 the pupa. At the time you were like the lava. Your abilities were limited. Your thinking were limited. Your comprehension was limited. But God wanted to move to adult, to imago, so that you will not be limited like a butterfly that can fly high and wide. You will not be a person that remains at the level of lava or pupa forever. 
you will move to the level of imago where you are not limited by distance you can fly up you can fly wide you can move fast than than a pupa or a lava you can soar high you can eat what lava cannot eat you are going to that level after this conference you will no longer be limited you will grow into maturity your mind will develop to the point of flying like butterfly you are not limited in a place you can go to your, beyond your present level you are going to experience that transformation it is an ongoing thing in your life as you leave this place i prophesy that the lord my god will give you the wing of eagle you will fly you will fly this will affect all the rest of your life financially you will fly Maritally, you soar high. Professionally, you go higher. You will not be limited in your career. Ministers, you are moving up. I declare by the power of this transformation, your ministry level is shown. If you believe in me, hear your amen better. Take your seat. I want to find a round up now. You, know, I decided to make it all round. Because transformation is not only spiritual. It's not, it's not only being conformed to the image of God in the spirit realm. That is where it starts. But that's not where it ends. We always stay there. No. It, it starts there. It doesn't end there. When you are renewed and you become like Christ, it will affect all facets of your life. It's a growth process. You are not supposed to stop there and be satisfied. Say, oh, now I am holy. And so I am supposed to be poor. No. In fact, the fact that you are holy, the Bible says Jesus Christ, concerning Jesus in Hebrews, he said because you love holiness, you love righteousness, and hate iniquity, the Lord, even your God, has exalted you above. Uh, above who? Uh, who is here? Who is going to be excited about the fellows here? I said, receive it now. It's not spiritual, but it goes beyond it. You are exalted above your fellows. Every professional in the house, men who are professionals in government, I speak to your life. Because you are in this conference, and because you are hearing this message, I prophesy your career. Be exalted above your fellows. Be exalted above your fellows. Be exalted above your colleagues. Be exalted above your contemporaries. Receive that grace. Take it now. Take it now. Take it over there. Go with it. And from today, you are exalted. Above your contemporaries. It is not only physical. It's not only spiritual, rather, it is also physical. Take your seat as I finish up. A transformed person or man who continues to be transformed will experience positive changes in his finances, in his family life, in his business, in his ministry, and his devotion to God. His environment will not remain the same, he will affect his environment. He becomes more intelligent more fruitful, more devoted to the things of God. He's more resourceful. He's more enlightened. He's more powerful. He's more attractive. You are more energetic. You are more accommodating. You are more hopeful. You are more prosperous. You are more grateful. You are more graceful. You are more generous. You are more dedicated. You are more joyful. You are more approachable. You are more glorious. You are more enjoyable. I say receive. May this be your experience. May this be your testimony. I say you have more of God. More of His blessing. Because you are being renewed. Your life is being renewed. Your ministry is being renewed. Your family is being renewed. Go in the power of this transformation. 
and change your world. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say, I receive. Take this down before I close. Transformation, as I said, is a process that continues. In 2 Corinthians 3 18, Paul says, As we behold his glory, we are being changed. We are being transformed from glory to glory. From glory to glory. From honor to honor. From blessing to blessing. From one lower level to higher level. Ah uh-uh. ah. You have come to behold his glory. You are being transformed. You are being changed. Second Corinthians 3.18 And you are moving from glory to glory. Before you came here, your level of glory may be like this. As you are going, I speak prophetically. You are moving from glory to glory. Men, you are moving to honor, from honor to honor. There is a level of 